This week we're in Accra, the capital of Ghana. It's a veritable hive of creation, music, art and fashion. We're in this West African culture hub to meet some of the designers kickstarting Africa's style revolution. I'm Aisha Ayensu, I'm the founder and creative director of the Ghanaian-based luxury fashion brand Christy Brown. Ghanaian brand Christy Brown is leading a new wave of African designers, making their mark on the world stage. Aisha, describe the fashion scene in Accra. Vibrant. It's just full of endless possibilities. There's so much going on at the moment. Over a decade ago, you couldn't even imagine how exciting this industry was going to become, but you see so many new designers, so many young up and coming brands. So, you know, you just feel the energy and just the optimism of this industry. Ghanaians are going through, you know, a renaissance of sorts where they're very accepting of themselves and allowing themselves to run free with their imagination and creativity. And you see that in our art, in our music and fashion. Vanessa, look at it and tell me if it's, if it's sticking out like the other side. Christy Brown is one of a number of African designers worn by celebrities. Alicia Keys and Beyonce's dance troupe, as well as Black Panther Wakanda Forever actress Denai Guerrera at a recent premiere of the film. The US and Europe are the brand's biggest markets. Tell us about your journey to become a fashion designer. First of all, the name Christy Brown is my grandmother's name. So my grandmother, she was a seamstress all her life, and she never had her, you know, her own fashion label. So in 2008, when I was in my final year of university in Lagos, I was studying psychology actually, not fashion, there was a movement happening on the continent. I say it was the Africa Rising movement, and everyone was really filled with that optimism of where the continent was headed. You could see a lot more Africans doing amazing things all over the world and being highlighted for it. And I really wanted to be a part of that movement. So the best way I knew how was through my passion, which is fashion. I knew a different kind of African woman, and which was very different from what you'd see on the news about, the, about Africa and, and poverty or wars. And I just felt that, you know what, this brand needs to speak to that. It needs to speak to that global woman who embraces her heritage, She's still very modern. And how do we use our tradition and, and culture to, to tell a story in a way that we know best? African designers are making space for themselves on the global fashion stage. US Vogue's November issue features Ghana, with Black Panther actress Michaela Cole on the cover, photographed in the capital her grandmother's hometown. Like all fashion capitals, Accra has regular fashion weeks. Like this one, about to get underway, the glitz. I'm so excited. Actually, this is my first time on glitz, and I'm very, very happy to be on glitz. Wow. Glitz Fashion Week is um, a fashion week for designers across Africa and the models to us across Africa, we all come together to work and showcase what Africa is all about. But now we see Ghanaian designers evolving and trying to adapt from different uh, cultures and different ethnicities and different backgrounds and then putting them together to fit the contemporary style we have now. So, I mean, kudos to us, we're doing so well. For me, Ghana is one of the countries where the is beaucoup plus développé. Contrairement aux pays francophones et tout, le Ghana, c'est un high level. Ghana is one of the rising stars in terms of fashion. We have very innovative designers that are working with the elements we have here. It's not just about 
talent. It's about the business side of them, of fashion and beauty. And there's access to market for them. There's funding for them. There's you know branding opportunity and all of that. So that's what I'm passionate about. And that's what I'm hoping that we can use the platform that we've created in the last 10 years. That's what we have done. I mean, we've worked with a lot of brands that are now showcasing abroad and now selling and spotting, but we want to see more of that. Glitz Fashion Week is where labels can make a name for themselves. Aisha won African Designer of the Year here in 2018 and 2019. She's considered a pioneer of ready-to-wear in Ghana. Her work is also headlining a landmark London exhibition at the Victorian Albert Museum, the UK's biggest ever focus on African fashion. With more exhibitions like the, the ones at the v and and more African brands highlighted on a global stage, it's, it's like an education process, right? It allows the world to experience our fashion differently. Whereas before it was maybe, it felt costumey to one person or the other. Now you find that they're, they're beginning to understand even that, oh, there are different regions, there are different parts of the continent, there are different countries that make up the continent. The different regions have their different aesthetics and we're giving the world a crash course on how we do us. And what do you think of this label of one billion people, African yeah. fashion? It's not the greatest feeling to be boxed in, right? You just want it to be fashion in general. However, I'm just one of those people who are of the view that it's okay, call it what you want to call it. It's amazing clothes, do you want to wear it? Fine, but the onus is on us and how we represent ourselves. As a luxury fashion brand, you're going head to head with brands like Chanel, Dior. What are the challenges with that? I mean, these are brands who have been here for decades, <laughs> you know, and so we, would, we look up to them. But for me, it's very important that the, the brands that come out of the continent establish our powerhouses. Who are our Chanel's? Who are our Dior's or our Vuitton's? And just owning space as that. And the respect and the honor will come with it. We're just putting the work in. So describe the idea behind Christy Brown. Describe the clothing. So Christy Brown is unapologetically African. I like to say that because we love prints, not because we feel a print is African, but there's something in how colors and textures marry and what it does to even the psyche that I think as a brand we enjoy using a lot. But in terms of the cuts and the silhouettes are modern, they're very flattering, very feminine as well, but it exudes this sense of power and elegance at the same time, but it's really empowering. We, we create clothes that make you feel good. You know, you walk into a room and you know that I've got this. That's what Christy Brown stands for. And where do you get your materials from? We source our fabrics from any and everywhere in the world. But the local market is also predominantly one of it, especially for our weaves and you know, any of the handmade dyes. They're usually made here, and we work with local artisans a lot. Hello, my name is George Tete. I'm the creative director and founder of Ghanaian fashion label Atutete. We are in the Makola um, market. This is one of the biggest markets in Ghana. Um, they sell fabrics, they sell haberdashery. It's a one-stop shop for everything. How often do you come here? Um, at least once a week, yes. I come here to buy zips, I come here to buy buttons. Uh, this is one of the shops that I buy from. So you want this? Yes. Ghana is famous for its beautiful fabrics, especially kente. Tell us about it. Yeah, so kente is one of the hand-woven fabrics from Ghana, and it's, it's for royalty, it's for big ceremonies. These are some of the traditional kentes that we have. This, this one is called the gold dust. That's why it's, it's gold in color, yes. And you know Ghana is one of the countries that produces gold. So that's what inspired this fabric. And then there's this one. It's called Ebusunya Yedom. That means the strength in family or the strength in togetherness. This is also a very beautiful one. It's got different colors, but it, it all comes together. This will look very good on you. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. 
Yeah, so this is the fabric that I use for my collection. Kinte represents who we are as Africans, as Ghanaians. And also, I chose it because of the color palette. Um, if you look at the collection Back to Basics, um, the predominant color is black and white. We actually use traditional fabrics to make uh, modern um, pieces that anybody anywhere can use. Your brand is 100% made in Ghana. Why is that important for you? Why make my, my pieces from somewhere else when I can um, give business back to the people that live in Ghana? You get your fabric from places like this, but also from an NGO in the north of the country. Tell us about that. So aside Kente, I also use Fugu. Fugu is also hand-woven and it's got a striped pattern. This NGO is called Sonba uh, Empowerment Centre. And what they do is they, they bring together young girls, train them on how to make the fugu, and then at the end empower them to start their own businesses. And I believe that sustainability is paramount to the Atutete brand, and these are some of the ways that we can encourage sustainability. Like Ato Tete, Aisha Ayenzu's brand impacts the lives of the local community. This is where the Christie Brown clothes are made, in Kualegono, one of the poorest neighbourhoods of Accra. Aisha, you opened your factory here in this neighbourhood, one of the poorest neighbourhoods in Accra, yeah. a decade ago. Why did you choose this area? To rent a space this size in town would have been just exorbitant, right, for a, a startup brand. But we came here and fell in love with the community. And just seeing the impact that we've had on the locals or, you know, the, the community is just so fulfilling. Talk to us about that impact. What impact has it had on the community? It's just what it represents, right? First of all, we employ a lot of people from the community. So it stands as like a beacon of hope of sorts. Then for us, it's even seeing those who have passed through our doors. And when they come in, you see how they start out before they learn the skill and then also progress in their careers. It gives meaning to all that we do. So welcome. <laughs> this is our atelier, and this is where all the samples are made. In total, we have about 78 staff. I'm going to stop with this lovely lady, Doris. Doris is probably one of our older staff, like even um, on the sampling team. She's from the community. She lives in Kolegono. And Doris, you've been here how many years? I've been here for nine years. When she came, she was so young and green, and now she's like one of our top sample makers. It has really changed my life because without this company, I don't know where it would have been. That I have something to work and feed myself. So this is our production floor. This, for example, is from our, our current collection. It's our fall 22, and it's a bubble hem dress. And this is the beautiful embroidery work that is, is our signature, yeah, isn't it? It's all hand, hand embroidered. The whole idea is to establish a global luxury brand from here, right? So it's important that we take inspiration and elements from here and modernize it and make it just palatable for the world. Miss Dorcas here is my longest serving staff member. And you, you come from the local community? Yes, please. And what's it been like working here? The way she talks to us, the way she encourages us, makes me work with her for a long time. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> when you have a culture that values people and values the respect of humans or as an individual, being a fair trade company is a no-brainer. Fair wages, more than fair wages actually, how your staff being um, taking care of what kind of insurances do you have in place. Even their working conditions is really important. The brand or the company should be able to pour into the lives of these people who are working with us. In terms of our, our road to net zero, sometimes they can feel like, oh, we're so far off from a B Corp. But just knowing that every little gesture, every little step counts. What kind of dyes are we using? That even influences the ecosystem or around what we do. And then it eventually affects like all the players involved in, you know, in this ecosystem we're creating. Sustainability has become a must for Ghana's creatives. Back in January 2022, France 24 broadcast this report, showing the landfill disaster happening just down the road from Aisha's workshop. Mountains of unwanted clothes, shipped from Europe and the US, 
and dumped here. At the Joyce Ababio College of Creative Design, sustainable clothes are a priority. Our problems here in Ghana, for instance, is second-hand clothing that comes in here that ends up in our gutters. And what we decided to do to solve the problem was to buy it and redesign it into different things. So sustainability is very important to us. As a designer, we have to be very conscious of the environment. Um, so I incorporate that in some of my designs. I will use a piece to like um, make an accent on a different design. And some local designers are going zero waste. We have a unique signature design, which is the mesh. And so this is it. And it's sustainable in its production. Because if you're using a fresh fabric, you end up literally producing no waste. And we are also able to use waste from other fashion houses. Christy Brown is about to have a revamp. What can you tell us about it? Next year, the brand is 15. What Christy Brown was 10 years ago, 12 years ago even. It's very different from you know, where it is now. Women have come into their own in a way where they're not fighting. They're just manifesting their excellence and amazing selves. And so there's less of a, a strife to have a seat at the table versus being, being awesome, harnessing your inner strength and inner power. So describe that look. What does it look like? So it's cleaner, less fuss, crisper. I find that it's modern, but it can also transcend the next you know, decade or so. It can sit anywhere in the world and it's not a, just an African brand, quote unquote. It's just a fantastic fashion brand. What do you think your grandmother would say if she could see her <laughs> name written across she'll the world? She'll be so proud and at the same time her blunt self will be calling me out on, but why did you do this? <laughs> I think she'll be smiling. She'll be smiling. Yeah. Aisha, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. From Accra to the catwalks of Portugal at Lisbon Fashion Week. Supporting local industries, respecting the environment, and showing reverence to cultural heritage, all while empowering women through her designs. Christy Brown is a label representative of a nation using fashion to bring about social change. Whoa, whoa, whoa.